Some of the cybersecurity breaches that we've seen this year, there's been a lot of them this year. We just mentioned some of the companies, Okta, Clorox, MGM, just to name a few. Give us a sense. What's the current threat environment as we enter 2024? Yeah, I think you have to look at uh, a couple things that are happening. So first of all, every business is becoming digital, which means that everybody is deploying more software. The more software is being deployed, you have more vulnerabilities, more misconfigurations. And um, as everything moves into the cloud and more digital uh, assets are being deployed, the attackers are going after the digital assets. And so you kind of have this threat environment that accelerates because you have more software and more issues. And at the, on the other hand, it's much uh, easier for these attackers to go after business, uh, which is uh, digital. And so we continue to see um, that that's the best way that they can go after financial uh, things that, that these companies have. Okay. Uh, and that's what is really uh, running that. All right, so we mentioned your stock performance year to date. Shares are actually up 30% since earnings in November, where you beat on EPS. And you also gave forward guidance that beat estimates. Um, some of your customers include some very big name companies, including Oracle, Caterpillar, also Aflac. What are they telling you about their needs? And, and give us a sense of overall demand. Look, I think you have to put a business lens to the cybersecurity conversation. And uh, because cybersecurity, uh, cyber risk is becoming one of the most important risks to business, um, the uh, maturity of this space is going away from being a whack-a-mole approach to, I found one issue here, let me put some money to, to beat that down into more of a professional sort of focus on risk management. And because cyber brings a certain amount of risk, these companies are looking at ways that they can really communicate, they can measure this risk that to their business, they can focus on the most important issues that are causing the risk because they know they cannot fix everything. And then they can communicate and eliminate this risk to their CEOs, to their boards. And that's really more their focus rather than just going after individual issues that are coming up. So in the cybersecurity space, there's a big worker shortage, according to the White House. At the same time, we're seeing a growing threat environment. Give us a sense. How does AI play a factor in all this? It's all about prioritization. So you are in a place where you have a lot more threats, not enough people. And so um, we got to figure out which threats are the ones that are the most impactful to your business. You cannot fix everything. And so AI becomes very important in that because, uh, look, the... The attackers, you, you kind of put them in two lens, right? One is uh, the folks who are going after finance and the others are nation state. And so when you have people who are running business, essentially ransomware, et cetera, these are businesses. And so they are using AI to be able to be more efficient in their business. And so uh, the, the cybersecurity uh, defenders on the, the commercial side, the government are also looking at similar approaches and they are. it is imperative that they look at similar approaches in AI to be able to use AI to figure out which are the assets that are most likely to be compromised and focus on fixing those so they can reduce the risk of being compromised.